Um, and the first question I would like to, uh, to ask you uh, is, there were five years between frequency and the road of bones. What happened uh, yeah. during these five years? Well, actually quite a lot, really. Um, just after frequency, there was quite a few lineup changes. Um, John, a uh, long-time bass player, left, and um, our replacement keyboardist, Mark, left at the same time. And also, um, our old drummer came back. <laughs> yes. So um, we 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 had to recruit a new bass player and a new keyboard player, and it seemed quite a um, an obvious thing to us to get in touch with Tim, our previous bass player, and 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 Neil was a recommendation from someone else, and uh, that took quite a while for us to kind of settle everybody in and for them to learn a lot of the back catalogue. But th but then also we had quite a few. Um, uh, celebrations, um, anniversaries. So we, we had the 25th anniversary of the wake. Yes. And we had the 30th anniversary of Tales, where we um, mixed the whole thing. And we wanted to go out and play some shows for that. We we did some subterranean shows, and of course we had the um, IQ 30, which was our 30th year celebration. And we wanted to mark that somehow because it's not every band that manages to get to 30 years so yeah, it's exactly. quite an yeah so all that took time it, it took i don't know maybe three years really um and it was only really after that that we thought i think it's about time we start this thing in earnest and start writing the new album so yeah the, the album actually only took about 18 months to be honest oh it's, it's a long time yeah yeah and and what are the reasons that made the team and paul come back again on the band i don't know uh i think tim had been doing various different things and he was just he was he was really surprised when we got in touch with him um and he he kind of jumped at it he it was uh I, to be honest when we first got together in we were all in our early 20s And it's a real formative time for everybody in, in your 20s. And, and the people that you meet and the friends you make then, that, you know, it's, it's a real, um, it becomes a real family. Yes. And I think it's really good that we've got most of the family back together now. And I think that's that was certainly um, in the minds of Tim and Paul when they were able to come back to the band. Uh, and Paul? Yeah, yeah, the same thing, uh, essentially. Okay, the same thing, okay. Um, he, he left, um, for, I'm, I'm not quite sure of the reasons why he left, but he had his own reasons, and um, pretty soon after that, he, he kind of regretted it. <laughs> and it, Yeah, and it was, it was just pure chance that actually Andy, our replacement drummer, had to take some time off from the band, and we asked Paul to come back, and um, it just became a permanent thing. Good. Uh, and now that you you are four original members again re reunited, does this give you more pressure towards fans, for example? Oh, for, uh, for the fans? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know really. Um, what, all we know is that it's a really nice lineup at the moment, and it feels great to be working with everybody again. And. Um, but, you know, IQ is at a good place at the moment, and I think that probably helps when you approach the writing. Uh, absolutely. And uh, after 10 albums, um, what is the state of mind of the band when, when you get in the studio? I don't think it's really changed much, apart from the fact that we have some experience. But I think we all still get very um, excited about doing a new album. I think if we didn't, then we just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I think it, it, it really shows when, um, if, if someone becomes complacent or if, or if they, you know, they start writing because they want to sound like something or whatever. I, I, the, the best thing to do with just about anything, really, is to just to be yourself and write what you can and um, do it because you enjoy doing it, and that's what we do. Good. And we still do, it, still do that now, you know. Uh, um, tell us about the writing process of the of the Road of Bones albums. Who brings the ideas? Uh, was it a collective um, process, writing process? Well, it's with, with any album that we write, 
everybody has some kind of input because we always try out ideas in the in the rehearsal studio yes. and people get to put their own lines and stuff. Um, essentially, though, um, and historically, uh, stuff is written at home by one person or another and they bring it in and um, we work on it like that. Um, we, we, this time, I have to say, most of it originated from me. Oh, yes. And then um, we, we would take it into the studio, uh, in the rehearsal studio, and we'd play around with it and try and put it together and, and maybe do some arranging together. And why you decide to do a bonus CD instead of a double album? Um, that's, <laughs> it's, it's difficult with this album because it's definitely not a double album. It's it's a what we generally what we do when we're writing is we write lots of material far more than we need, Good. and we pick the bits that work that flow best together. Uh, so um, with the road of bones we did that, but actually we had lots of other material that was kicking around, and um, what we wanted to do that the first and foremost the most important thing was to get the album to flow from start to finish, which we did. But then we found that we had about 50 minutes of music left over. And we just thought this time people might like to see what else we've been working on, rather than just put it onto the shelf and forget about it. We haven't heard anything about that bonus CD. Can you tell us more about that? About the second CD? Yes, because we, we, we haven't heard uh, anything about, uh, about that bonus uh, CD. We only have the five songs of, of, the, main, of the main CD. Oh really? I thought you were the, um, uh, the, the double CD. Oh okay. Um, yeah, there's six tracks on there, um, and they they're quite varied in their feel, really. And and that's probably the reason why they weren't on the first album because the the first album has a very cohesive feel to it. I think it flows very well from start to finish, and, and the other tracks, uh, you know, I, I personally I think they're they're good as tracks they don't necessarily make for a great album together from start to finish okay um but um i'm actually quite happy with some of them and some of them were almost on the first oh, album okay. there's the, the first track knucklehead is yes. an eight and a half minute track and that that was always going to be on the first album until the very last minute And there was not, there's another track on there called Fall and Rise, which um, it was a toss-up between that and Ocean as to which one would be on the first album. And Ocean just kind of won out. Okay, great. We, we will uh, hear it uh, when we, we will receive the album. But at the, at the moment, yeah. we, we, we only have the five, the five songs of, of, the, of, the, of the main CD. Um, okay, right. uh, The Road of Bones refers uh, to the Rus Russian Um, uh, event, I think. Um, and why you choose to call the album like that? Well, the, the Road of Bones, the title was taken from that, but actually the, the track itself is about something else. Ah, it's, not, it's, it's not about the Russian uh, event, uh, about the highway and... Um, yeah, no, no it's, it's not. No, it's, um, we borrowed the title of that for our song. But actually, it's about a serial killer. Ah, road. okay. It's about the road that he he builds with the bones of his victims. Oh, it's awful. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit gruesome, I know. <laughs> But um, that's that's really um, why the, the album's called The Road of Bones, simply because it's a really good title for an album, I think. Okay, okay, it's good. Uh, and um, with, with that track, I when I was writing the music for it, I... I I don't know why, but I just had in mind a kind of sinister serial killer type feel because it feels very much like a soundtrack to me, that, that, that um, song. And so I sat down with Pete before he started writing the lyrics to discuss this and to, we could both agree on, on the kind of feel and the, the story behind it. In fact, the the road of bones, it, the the song is very intense, uh, slowly at the beginning, then more powerful at the end. It's a really great song. Mm. Mm, thanks. Um, let's talk about the two uh, other songs we have uh, selected. Um, I would like to to talk to you about without walls. 
uh, because it's, sure. a, it's a very heavier and intense. Um, can you tell us more about that song? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of grew organically, really. When we're writing stuff, we never set out to write long songs or short songs. We just do come up with ideas, and then if we think it needs another bit, we add that on, and if we think it's finished at three minutes, and then we stop. But with the road of buttons, oh, sorry, with, without walls, it just felt very much as though it was going somewhere else. So um, I came up with the... Um, Actually, the end first. The uh, the, uh, the whole thing broke. It's a nice big um, keyboard riff. And, um, that suggested the end of a track to me. Yes. And so I kind of worked backwards to a certain extent. And it also suggested the very start for me as well. So um, I it, it's like two versions of the same same song really. The, the start is very nice and serene and kind of lulls you into a full sense of security and then it, it becomes a bit more sinister and then it crashes in with this really intense driving riff. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, and uh, it just grew organically from that. And um, the other song I would like to talk to you about is from the inside, from the outside in. Um, okay. Because the guitars also are very mm, more heavier. Um, Uh, from where came that inspiration um, with the, that kind of, of style, of, of guitar style? Um, I don't know, really. I, it's, I suppose... Um, it, it, again, it just happened naturally. It's, it's something that um, whenever I'm writing, I, 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 most of the time I write with a computer, but occasionally I will write with a guitar in mind, and that riff just popped into my head and uh, I wanted to get it down so I actually wrote that on my iPad <laughs> yes yeah and I put the riff down and it again it grew organically but it just suggested a much heavier sound to me that riff and the chorus it just felt to me like it I could do it best justice by having that really nice riffy almost metal type yes. feel to it yes it, it sometimes it sounds like dream theater oh really yes um, uh, it, it's, it's less heavier but it sounds like a dream theater a, li a little bit yeah, yes. yeah. I, i mean it, well, it wasn't the intention certainly to sound like them it's that's, that's a bit of a coincidence i think but um you know i don't think that's any bad thing Um, let's talk about uh, the gigs, uh, the concerts. Um, I saw there is no exten extensive tour planned at the moment. Uh, no gig in France, so for, for, for example. Well, for us to do long tours these days, because um, personally, I took early retirement from my day job a couple of years ago, but everybody else has a job, ah, and okay. most of them have as well so they have to devote most of their time to that and if they've got time off they have to spend it with their family so we we find it very difficult uh, usually we end up playing long weekends yes um, and to put either two or three gigs together um, which is a pity really because it would be nice to do an extensive tour to promote the album but what we're doing is uh, um, we're fitting in as many gigs as we can this year and just promoting it that way Okay, um, so thank you, uh, Mike, for all these these answers. Hi, I'm Mike Holmes from IQ, and you're listening to United Rock Nation.